Sup guys, I'm back and happy Easter. Yes, and today for Easter, I'm going to be reviewing King Kong vs. Godzilla from 1962. Yes, I'm really, really excited to do this review for you guys. And I know I told you in the last video that I was going to be reviewing the Japanese versions of all these Godzilla films, except for the anime trilogy and the American Godzilla films. Well, I watched the Japanese version of this, of King Kong vs. Godzilla, and... I found it a little confusing, you know, there's a lot of stuff in the movie that I found a little confusing. So I'm going to be reviewing the American version of this film. Call it blasphemy, but I actually like the American version better than the Japanese version. So yeah, let's get started with this review. So we opened up this movie with someone from the United Nations, the United States representative of the United Nations, Eric Carter. And he's basically discussing how this Japanese scientist, you know, he's a Nobel Prize winner because he found these berries that have a lot of medicinal purposes, but they're only found on one remote island and the natives are reluctant on giving them up because of their strange island god who is, who they consider is a monster. So the Pacific Pharmaceutical Company, their TV ratings have been down. So when the, 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 uh, the owner of this company, Taco, so, you know, heard about this monster, he was like, he's all in, you know, he wants, you know, better publicity, he wants better TV ratings, so he tells a group of people to go to, to the island, Faroe Island, which is where the monster's at, and bring it back so they can get higher TV ratings. So then we get to meet Sakurai, Fujita, and Famiko. So, Famiko is, is uh, Sakurai's sister, and... Fujita's girlfriend and during this scene we learn that Fujita has a wire that he's made that is stronger than steel It's like really really strong material and that he plans to conduct tests in Hokkaido the next day Then we cut to the Arctic Ocean with a submarine named Seahawk and They're realizing that the water temperature there is a lot warmer than it should be But then they see this iceberg that you know is emitting a lot of light so they go there to investigate and know what happens? They crash, they crash into the iceberg. So what they do next is they release a mayday water signal, but then they hear a, a really loud roar and then the submarine is destroyed. So there's a helicopter circling above them. They see the mayday water signal, but then they see the iceberg. They see something come out of it and it's Godzilla. And it's a really good transition from Godzilla's raids again and and uh, King Kong versus Godzilla because in the last movie Godzilla was submerged in ice and now he's coming out of the ice which is really really cool. So then Godzilla comes ashore and the army is attempting to stop him using tanks, missiles and what do you know they're not working. So Sakurai and his team you know they arrive at the island and they're confronted by the natives and you know they're trying to convince the chief to stay there and they, invent they eventually let you know the chief lets them stay there but they see that they're doing a ritual where they're grinding up the, berry, the berries into a juice. And then they hear, you know, the thunder clouds and the people scramble back to go back to the ritual that they were doing. And next thing you know, they hear a loud, they hear a really loud roar. And that scares uh, Sakurai and his team. Then we cut back to Japan. And remember how I said that, you know, um, Fujita was going to Hokkaido to conduct more tens tests on his strength? Well, his girlfriend gets news that the, his plane has crashed and... So in the panic, she goes to Hokkaido and see if, she, if he survived. Then we cut back to Eric Carter from the United Nations, and he's joined by a scientist named Dr. Johnson. And he states that Godzilla will definitely attack Japan because it's like, you know, a salmon returning to the place where he was born. But they also say that Godzilla will most likely stray away from electricity. Then we cut to Faroe Island where, you know, a giant octopus is attacking the village. It's attacking this one small little cabin because it's trying to get the berry juice. But then we hear a loud, a loud roar. And what do you know, the monster that's on the island is Kong. And he's fighting the octopus and he defeats the octopus. But then he turns his attention to the berry juice and starts drinking it. And of course, the berries actually you know, make you fall asleep. So Kong falls asleep. So what they do is they get a raft and they're taking him back to Japan. Then they cut back to Eric Carter and Dr. Johnson and saying that, you know, Godzilla's brain is about this small and King Kong's brain is like really, really huge. And how they're like instinctive rivals and they're just, and they're going to clash. They're going to go head to head. So they're transporting Kong on a raft, and the raft is wired to dynamite. So the next, you know, Taco actually comes, the, the owner of the pharmaceutical company, comes to the boat to see, you know, to see Kong. But then all of a sudden there's a police boat that comes and states that 
you know, you got to return Colin back to Faroe Island. You know, if you don't, I'm going to, I'm going to arrest you. So then we cut back to Japan and what do you know, Fujita's alive. Apparently he really, he never got on the plane because his boss kept him working. So they get, then they get news that Godzilla is heading towards Hokkaido, which is where Fumiko's going to, it's where Fumiko's going. So Fujita goes to rescue, um, Fumiko, which Fumiko is actually taking a train there. So yeah, then from and Fujita actually rescues her. So then we cut back to the boat and Kong is starting to wake up. So what they do is they cut the cables that connecting the, the raft to the boat and they, and they blow up the dynamite. And Kong survives that and now he's heading towards Japan. So when Kong reaches land, you know, they're predicting that, you know, Godzilla's going this way and Khan's going that way and they're going to intersect, they're going to intercept each other and they're going to fight each other. Then we get to see the first confrontation, the first monster battle in this movie. Kong fights Godzilla and the fight is really not that eventful. You know, Kong throws rocks but Godzilla has atomic breath so he's firing that and it's driving Kong, driving Kong away. So God, Kong basically runs away and Godzilla wins that battle. So what the army plans to do is that they plan to lure Godzilla in a, in a giant hole and they plan to fill it with poison gas and explosives. So Godzilla actually does fall into the hole, but he comes out of there unscathed. So the next line of defense is is they're going to they're going to surround Tokyo with electrical wires like they did in 1954, except they're going to surround it with 1 million volts of electricity. But they also learn that Kong actually gets stronger from electricity. So what happens is that you no, know, Godzilla goes to Tokyo, you know, he goes to the wires and it's working. It's driving driving Godzilla away. But then Kong shows up and what do you know, Kong is absorbing the electricity from the from the towers. So then we cut to Fujita and Fumiko, they're evacuating the city, and what do you know, they get separated. And Fumiko is taking a train and Kong actually grabs the train, gets the train car, and um she takes and he takes Fumiko out. And haven't you guys noticed that all the bad stuff that Fumiko has experienced have all, both involved trains? So yeah, that, that's, that's a little crazy. But so yeah, Fumiko, stay away from trains. So what Kong does is that he takes her and he climbs the top of the, the the Capitol building. So they're planning, you know, they're planning on shooting Kong, you know, but then um Sakurai and Fujita arrive and they say, like, no, 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 don't shoot Kong because he, he's, he's got Fumiko in, in his hand. So then what they plan to do is they plan to um, use the berries and bury you and put it in the head of a rocket and fire it above Kong so it can explode and the uh, the berry juice will go down to Kong and it'll make him sleepy and they're planning on um playing the uh, the drums the drum tune and the the music from the um the tribe the native tribe on Faroe Island so they can get Kong to sleep so the plan works so the next plan is to get Kong and Godzilla to fight each other and hopefully that they both die so what they decide is to use an airlift and remember Fujita's string? Uh, they use that string to airlift Kong and take him to Godzilla. So that plan works. So they're taking Kong to Mount Fuji where Godzilla is. And when they're fighting, it's at the beginning of the fight, it's a one-sided fight. Kong's getting his butt kicked. He even gets concussed. He gets knocked unconscious because he slid into a rock. He landed face first to a rock. But then... Thunder clouds are coming in and electrical storms and Kong gets struck in the face. Remember, electricity makes Kong stronger. So yeah, Kong wakes up and now it's a more even fight. Kong has electrical powers and he's electrocuting Godzilla. And one of the funniest scenes happens in this battle is uh, if you guys have seen that meme, uh, Kong shoving a tree down Godzilla's throat, you know, eat your vegetables. You know, that's, that's pretty funny. So now guys are they're they're battling and they both fall off a cliff and they fall into the water now there was a rumor there used to be a rumor out there that in the japanese version of this film godzilla wins and in the american version of this movie kong wins but that is fake that is not true in the ending kong rises up out of the water and godzilla doesn't so it may look like God, you know kong has won but there was a booklet release, I forget what it was called, but it stated that it was actually a tie. But there's nothing out there that states that Godzilla won. There's, I think there's two differences in the endings. Um, in the in the Japanese version, in the ending, you hear both Kong and Godzilla roar. But in the American version, 
you only hear a Kong roar at the end. And I believe in the American version, there's a series of earthquakes, you know, natural disasters. And in the Japanese version, there isn't. So yeah, that's basically the end of the movie. That's it. So yeah, guys, I really, really enjoyed this film. I really, really enjoyed re-watching this and, re and reviewing it for you guys. You know, this is a personal favorite of mine. You know, I love this film, even though it's like makes no sense. You know, Kong is not the same size as Godzilla, but it's still fun. Even though the final battle, you know, it is the best part of the film. Even though, you know, it's a little cheesy, you can't, you can't say that it's not fun. It's a very, very fun battle. And I'm really excited that they're remaking this movie. They're doing another Godzilla vs. Kong movie in 20, actually this year and coming out in November. I have hope it does not get pushed back any further because I'm really, really hoping, I really want to see it. But yeah, if you haven't checked out this movie, definitely check it out. It's awesome. I highly recommend it. And I, yeah, I cannot wait for November when the new one comes out. So yeah, happy Easter, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.